painter and musician, Sergio de Castro was born in Argentina to a family of Spanish origins. In the 20th century, many artists chose the path of abstraction, but Sergio de Castro chose to explore the figurative, which he did tirelessly and wonderfully. Sergio de Castro was born in Buenos Aires in 1922, after which he spent much of his childhood in Europe, between Switzerland and Italy. Back in Latin America in 1933, he studied music and architecture, while also learning Spanish through his contact with poets such as Pablo Neruda, Octavio Paz and Julio Cortazar. Two encounters from that period had a profound effect on Sergio de Castro's work as an artist. The first was with Joaquin Torres Garcia, whom he met in 1941. The painter introduced him to monumental art, and the two would develop a close working relationship. Sergio de Castro worked on two murals with Torres Garcia in Montevideo and the pair exhibited together in New York in 1946. The second encounter was with Manuel de Falla. Sergio de Castro worked as an assistant to the composer for a time in 1945. In the 1940s, Sergio de Castro pursued both painting and musical composition in parallel. The artist took part in exhibitions, traveled and developed an interest in pre-Columbian art, which inspired his work. Sergio de Castro arrived in Paris in 1949 with the help of a grant from the French government. The City of Light was a hub attracting artists from all over the world with a frenetic, vibrant art scene. Sergio de Castro settled in the French capital for good, putting down roots in the city's Montparnasse neighborhood. After a short time, as a member of the musical group Zodiac, which was headed by his friend Maurice Oana, Sergio de Castro soon decided to devote himself exclusively to painting. He chose the figurative, which he explored through its most diverse themes, such as literature, myths, and legends. Sergio de Castro painted not only on wooden paper, but also on canvas. His first monumental painting, El Puerto, measured three meters long. A series of exhibitions followed in Paris. The artist's paintings were shown at the Galerie Jeanne Castel, the Galerie Pierre, the Galerie Rive Gauche, and the Galerie Charpentier, where his work stood alongside those of André Lonskoy, Pablo Picasso, and Nicolas de Stael. His work was well received by critics. Jean Bouré and André Chastel wrote their first articles about him. Sergio de Castro was a close friend of Maria Elena Vera da Silva. He was also a member of Nicolas de Stael's entourage. Like the latter, Sergio de Castro supported a figurative revival, forming a bridge between the figurative and the abstract in his work. He received particular admiration from Antonio Sigui. Sergio de Castro travelled extensively from Italy to the Netherlands and Greece. He drew on his travels to form the depth and light of his works. He recorded all of his impressions in his notebooks. The 1950s were a period of major innovation in Sergio de Castro's pictorial work. The artist developed a series of linear compositions with figures framed by double lines. After admiring examples of Sienese painting in Italy, Sergio de Castro started to paint with egg tempura from 1952 onwards. He executed the technique on tinted console paper, painting subtle still lifes that would plunge the viewer into the intimate world of the painter through simple and everyday objects. From figures, still lifes and landscapes to the studio itself, Sergio de Castro approached a sensory world with great subtlety. A musician himself, Sergio de Castro combined poetry and music in his work, like Paul Klee or Vasily Kandinsky. His works, like a musical score, follow a rhythm. He was able to bring together rigor and finesse with a great economy of means. Sergio de Castro began to work with stained glass for the first time in 1956. He designed the stained glass windows for a church in the Benedictine Monastery of San Sacramon in Couvre de Chef La Folie in Normandy. Two other stained glass projects followed. The artist designed the windows of a Lutheran church in Dulzberg, a quarter of Hamburg in Germany, and those of a collegiate church in Romont in Switzerland. The 1950s were a period of international acclaim for Sergio de Castro, who exhibited works in Tokyo, Munich and Turin. Two solo exhibitions were dedicated to the artist in London in 1958 and 1961 at the Francis Matissen Gallery. They were a great success. His work was praised by the critics André Chastel and Denise Sutton. In 1959, Sergio de Castro took part in the Documenta II exhibition in Cassel. A new major solo exhibition of the artist's work was presented at the Lorenzelli Gallery in 1963 in Milan. 
In 1964, Sergio de Castro's first monograph by Denis Sutton was published as part of the Le Musée de Poche collection by Georges Faure. An important solo exhibition of the artist's work was held at the Betty Thoman Gallery in Basel in the same year. During this period, Sergio de Castro was working on a series of variations on paintings by El Greco and Vermeer. The 1960s were marked by two major institutional retrospective exhibitions of the artist's work. The first was at the Kunstwerden in Hamburg in 1965, and the second was at the Musée d'Art at the Histoire in Fribourg in 1966. The French government acquired the painting L'Atelier Ete 59 in 1972. In the same year, 31 sun-drenched Tunisian landscapes were exhibited at the Wildenstein Gallery in London. Once again, the exhibition was a success. As Sergio de Castro travelled in the Maghreb region, his work took a more Baroque direction. Sergio de Castro was also invited to take part in the Argentine Pavilion at the 39th Venice Biennale in 1980, where he exhibited 12 large format paintings. In 1987, a major retrospective exhibition was held in the artist's native city of Buenos Aires, where 30 years of creative work were presented at the Museo de Arte Moderno. At the end of the 1980s, Sergio de Castro returned to mural painting when he was commissioned to create a work for El Fatakem in La Defense, Paris. In 2006, Sergio de Castro made a major donation of 220 works to the Sunlo Museum in Normandy. The donation represents the largest public collection of the artist's works to date. Sergio de Castro's works are collected all around the world. Sergio de Castro passed away in Paris in 2012. He left behind a body of work as poetic as it is luminous.